All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we're talking about the winter storage of fig trees. And in particular, we're gonna to cover topics like when to store them, if you should store them, and also where to store them. If you guys really like this content, please do me a favor right now, hit that like button for me, hit the subscribe button for me right now, and also check out my blog, figboss.com. There's so much other fig related information there that is different than the content here on my YouTube channel. So first and foremost, let's talk about when, because I've been getting a lot of questions about when they should store their fig tree. People are asking me, Ross, I just had my first couple frosts, or maybe there's a frost in the forecast. People are really concerned. Well, guess what guys? Fig trees are deciduous trees. They're not evergreen. They're not tropical, meaning they need to go dormant. In fact, they should go dormant if they can. And so if you can let them hang out here on the patio or wherever you have your potted fig, let them get hit by two to three frosts, let them truly go dormant before we put them away. They're gonna drop all their leaves, they're gonna drop all their fruits or most of their fruits, and the sap flow in the branches, if we take our pruning shears, this is how we know if it's dormant. If we cut the fig tree and you make a cut, you will stop seeing a lot of sap flow in the branches or you'll almost see none because the sap flow when the, tree is, the trees are dormant, excuse me, the sap flow goes from the tips of the branches in the growing season and slowly goes down into the branches, down into the trunk, and then down into the roots where it's stored for the winter time. And then in the spring, we have this big explosion of growth with all those carbohydrates stored from the prior year up into the branches and it explodes with new growth of the season. So this is really, I think, uh, the best way to know uh, but in general, you could also just say if your fig trees are going to be subjected in the forecast to a temperature lower than 15 degrees Fahrenheit, you, it's time to put them away. Usually by that time, we've had enough frost. We've already had here in the Philadelphia area two frosts. And uh, by that time, we see that 15 degree low. It's probably the time where the sap flow has returned. We can do our pruning and then we can put them away for for good this winter time. Now, what about, should my fig tree get hit by frost? I think this is obviously a, uh, a pretty simple question now at this point. Yes, in fact, I'll tell you a little story. If you don't let your fig trees get hit by frost before putting them away, you can end up having a lot of condensation and a lot of humidity form in your storage environment. So I, as an example, had a lot of fig trees one year, put them in my sunroom, and because there were so many fig trees in there, and they didn't drop their leaves, they were still transpirating. They were taking the, the soil from the, um, the moisture from the soil, bringing it up through their leaves, and it was releasing that into the sunroom, and we actually had mold that formed in there. So don't be one of those people. Just let your tree get hit by frost. If you wanna treat it like a house plant, I wouldn't do that. It's not really a good idea. You want them to go dormant. You want them to be out here in this environment because that biological advantage of that explosion of growth in the springtime is, such a huge benefit. So in short, let them go dormant, let them get hit by two to three frost, and even let them out here, stay out here to ensure that they're dormant until you see about 15 degrees in the forecast. Now, it does depend a little bit, that winter low does depend a little bit about the size and age of your fig tree. If it's a little bit younger, you'll see that a lot of younger trees, if you just rooted them, they don't have really well lignified growth. And so the growth over here is a different level of lignification actually than this side of the tree. And this side of the tree can go all the way down to 15. But this branch here is so just poorly lignified, it grew too much in the summertime and in the fall. And so now it actually could take damage, that part of the branch could take damage all the way down to only 20 degrees or in the low 20s. So you wanna be careful about the level of lignification. Young trees are a little bit different than some of these older trees here I have. These can certainly go down to 15, probably maybe even a little bit lower, but definitely keep them above 15 if you, if you can help it. Now, what about if you have to store them? Well, that's the thing, right? We just mentioned that. If it doesn't get below 15, your older fig trees that we just showed you, they're not gonna take damage in the wintertime. The branches won't take damage and the roots won't take damage. So if you're in like a, an 8B, as an example, or warmer, you probably don't have to store fig trees. And you live in a very luxurious climate 
a lot of people like me have to take these fig trees every year and move them into a winter storage environment. So where exactly do we store them? I'm going to give you guys a couple options and places that you wouldn't want to store them. For me, all these potted figs, the majority of them, by the way, are in smaller pots. This is why I recommend putting them in smaller pots. You live in these colder places, you're going to have to move them. If it's too big, like a 15 gallon, it's just going to be too heavy. If you only have a couple fig trees, I would go as big as possible in terms of the pot size, but you'll realize these smaller pots are a lot easier to move and the bigger ones for that reason are just not really worth it. So here's my first winter storage environment that I would recommend. This is um, a root cellar type environment. It's not very deep down. It's only about six to eight inches below grade but all that heat rises from the bottom here below my sunroom and gets trapped in this storage area that we have. And so what happens, you actually have a very stable temperature in here that acts like a root cellar. It's not too warm in the summer and it's not too cold in the winter time. You want a storage environment, guys, that stays above 15, obviously, because if you, they're gonna take damage outside below 15 you wanna make sure your storage environment's gonna stay above 15, right? But you also wanna keep it cooler because if the trees are not dormant and you didn't listen to my advice, they wake up too soon, it ruins your fig season the following year. And so that warmth, that soil temperature from the environment you're storing them in could be a very bad thing. It could wake them up prematurely and then you just have a very bad growing season the next year. Don't be one of those people Every year I get messages from you guys saying, hey Ross, my fig tree's awake and we're still like months away from our average last frost. It's, you know, it's January, it's February, and I really don't have any great advice for those people. It's just a difficult thing to happen. All right, so the second environment you could do is a greenhouse. And if you have a greenhouse, what happens actually, as you can see, that it warms up pretty quick. The sun comes in, that's the greenhouse effect. It warms up during the day. Now, to combat this, because we don't want it to get too warm inside the greenhouse, people think actually, oh, well, it's going to be warm during the day. It'll be warm at night. That's not the case. The heat from the day very quickly escapes at night, and you have very little insulation actually at, at night. And that's when we have to really protect them. It's not during the day. The daytime warmth is going to wake them up prematurely, and the nighttime cold that this, this greenhouse really doesn't provide any protection from is actually gonna kill them. So in fact, if it's really actually only, um, let's say five degrees outside, this greenhouse may only be about three to five degrees warmer than it is outside. Probably even less than that. It's really a very small amount. So we wanna insulate something like this. If you're gonna create a structure, a greenhouse structure, or maybe a makeshift structure of your own, insulate it. Trap in the heat from the ground. Maybe put an artificial heater in here. This is what I do. Put an artificial heater, uh, a space heater, excuse me, that's attached to an electrical, electrical outlet down here at the bottom, and you insulate this top area. I put a tarp over top that makes sure that it's dark, the sun doesn't come up and warm things up too much in the, in the, um, during the day. And then I'm also trapping in all that heat that's rising. I'm insulating the earth. That's the key. Now, people also have sheds, garages, and basements. Do not put it in a basement. Your unheated basement, I promise you, is too warm. Even though it is unheated, it's too warm for fig trees, guys. This is the most common place that I hear about that people put their fig trees in, and they, of course, just message me in that springtime or, let's say, really deep into the winter time and it's just a really heartbreaking thing to hear about so don't put them in the basement it's too warm that's the rookie mistake if you instead have a garage or a shed i would put them in that again with the sheds you have to be a little careful about if it's going to get too cold because they need to be insulated maybe they need a little extra heat i seriously doubt guys that your your shed is much warmer than it is outside if it's zero degrees outside your shed's probably only five degrees warmer, maybe seven degrees warmer. So you have to adjust. If zero degrees is coming in your forecast, you gotta figure something out. It's the same thing with that greenhouse. I have a heater out there 
If your shed's now attached to your house, well, that's a different story. If your garage, of course, is attached to your house, that's a different story. If you have heat that you can turn on in these places, that's a different story. And so the garage is a great place, I find, for most people's fig trees. Uh, that's typically where I see a lot of people put them, and uh, that's where people see the most success. So thank you guys here for watching. That was uh, the winter storage of fig trees. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Hit the subscribe button, hit that like button if you haven't, and check out my blog, figboss.com. Take care, everybody.